Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray, fill my head with your thoughts and in my heart, Lord, let it be all in your intentions, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will sweep across this room, Lord. Sweep across our hearts today. Touch our hearts, Lord. Touch our minds, Lord. Thank you that you are working in every circumstance in our lives, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you have put your hand upon our lives, Lord, so that we may walk and know you. What a privilege, Lord. We're so blessed to be with you. In all these times, Lord, what would we do and be without you, Jesus? Mm. Mm. And you have yet so much more for us. We've still only seen just a tiny bit of what it is that you have in store for us in this life, but also forever and ever. Help us, Jesus, to walk in your footsteps. Help us, Lord, to understand all the acts that you did while you were here on earth, Lord, so that we may walk in your footsteps, so that we may understand our calling and what it is and what it means to be a Christian, Lord. Not just a Christian in the secret place, in our own private little life, Lord, but that we display the, the Christianity that you called uh, to give, Lord, that you've called us to walk in, Jesus. What is it exactly? What are the mysteries? And help us, Lord, to dig deeper into the understanding of the nature of your heart, Lord, and the understanding of who you are. Help us to always look away, Lord, and always to always look away from the things that you can give, Lord, but help us always to look to your face, Jesus. Help us to look at your face, Lord, because everything else is provided. Help us to understand the importance of looking at your face, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So what is it that Jesus has for us which is much more than we can seemingly touch and feel and understand? What is it that that he actually came to give us. How can we become a Christian that can really learn to interpret the meanings and the depths of everything that Jesus did, just, not just in the act of the now, but in the act of what he did in the now moment, which had a lasting, what's it called? Ah. Uh, effects on everything that's what i'm going to talk about today right that's what we want to know right i always pray that i will know more of him in deeper more profound ways than i did yesterday than i did an hour ago i always want more to understand more of him i can read the word but what it, what does it actually in the spiritual really mean and what does it actually really mean in the physical realm as well? Because those two things are intertwined when Jesus moves. So I mean, in John, in, in John, there are many things in the book of John, the Gospel of John, which are only written in the Gospel of John, which is why I really enjoy the Gospel of John. <laughs> because John took things out that nobody else took out and wrote about in regard to Jesus. Many things. So this part I'm going to read to you, we all know it, and we've all read it. I'm going to try and dig deeper into the meaning of it. it it's Jesus washing the disciples' feet. So I'm in John 13, verse 1. 
Jesus knew that the night before Passover would be his last night. And I'm reading from the Passion Bible because when we read it in different different ways and in different interpretation, we, we get it in in different ways. We understand it more in depth, right? That's why I changed my Bibles. <laughs> Last night on earth before leaving this world to return to the Father's side. Now imagine that. Jesus knew that this was the last night before he would return to the Father's side. Now, when we go through things, do you know that the Father is with you? Already here we see a, a characteristic of Jesus. Everything he did, he knew that, he, that the Father was with him, that he was never alone. He knew that the things that he was going to go through would be hard for the carnal. But for the spiritual, oh, what a joy, right? So when we go through things, through the hardship, do we know that the Father is next to you, right? You're not walking in it alone. That Jesus is next to you, right? All throughout his time with his disciples, Jesus had demonstrated a deep and tender love for them. <laughs> demonstrated, showed, he lived out, he poured out, he constantly gave, right? And now he longed to show them the full measure of his love. I find that very interesting, that sentence. So I'm going to dig into, dig into the full measure of what it is that he has. They've only seen some parts. But when we really understand the, the meaning and the depths of Jesus washing the disciples' feet, we will understand the full measure of what it is that he has in store for us. Full. Full. That means nothing is lacking. It's complete, it's whole, it's like the number seven. It's full, right? The full measure of his love, of all that he has in store for his disciples, this, by this act, he proved it. I've always, I find some great things in, in this uh, sermon when I studied for today. Because I've always felt, and this is my prayer, I, Lord, I want to know your mysteries. I don't just want to know that the things I can read, the things that I can understand while I read it. I want to know and understand the mysteries and the things that I can't read, which are written in between in the lines, right? Which are written right in the middle of from one word going to the next one. What does it actually mean? What is it that you're trying to tell me, Lord? This is how I, this is my prayer when I read the word. Because I can read the word, demonstrate his love. Yeah, you can surface on top of the word. But I want the essence of the meaning of the walk of Jesus Christ, right? That's what we want, isn't it? We want the full understanding of Jesus Christ. Before the evening, their evening meal had begun, the accuser had already deeply embedded betrayal into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now Jesus was fully aware that the Father had placed all things under his control. I want to say to you that because you know Jesus, things are placed in full control. You don't... I mean, it's so big that you cannot really comprehend it. Now, that's authority. If we really could comprehend how big it is, wow, the church would really grow. I mean, I mean, massively grow. So it's so important that we understand that the authority we have in Christ is not just while here now but that everything was, that was placed on Jesus Christ is placed on you. 
It's so big that your, your brain just want to explode. But that's the truth of the matter of the fact. I could go home now. <laughs> but that's if we could contemplate those things. Now that's the authority that the Father gave Jesus. And because the Spirit of Jesus abides within you, that's the same authority that you can execute because of Jesus Christ. And we whine and moan and complain. and That is actually such an insult to everything that Jesus did. We should grow a little bit. Every day I talk to myself, just get over that one too. Just get over it. Just move away from it. You have Jesus. That's how I talk to myself, you know, because I'm tired of this whining, complaining attitude in the carnal, right? We have Jesus and the authority of Jesus. That means when we speak, it's only when you know it, Otherwise, it won't work. That means when we speak, prayer works. That's big, right? I'm being very bold here, but saying it out loud. But that's the truth of it. So Jesus was fully aware. That's my point. It's only if you're fully aware... It's only when you really know it that when you speak with the authority of Christ, it will work. You have to be fully aware, not some, fully. Right? I like that. It's so important that the Father had placed all things. Do you know that it's not some, it's all things. That's big. Under his control, for he had come from God and was about to go back to be with him. So because of Jesus, the Father sees Jesus when he sees you. That's why what I'm saying is the truth. (laughs) That we carry the authority of Christ to execute his plan. To do the things and greater things, that is, so, that is so big. The Bible says so. Do greater things than Jesus. What does that actually mean, right? How do we come to do those greater things? I'm going to dig into that one. There's so much in this passage. There is, it's stuffed with the fullness of Christ. So he got up from the meal and took off his outer rope. Now you can only take your clothes off if you know who you are in God. You can only be vulnerable if you know who you are in God and that you know that Jesus is with you. That's the only place that you're able to stand naked. Am I right? Otherwise, we prefer to wear clothes. We prefer to hide. Why do we actually hide in the clothing, just like Adam and Eve? Because they went into themselves. They went and did it their own way. We can do the same through the carnal. And the devil will help along and the world will help along, right? But the devil helped Eve to look away from what God had already given her. Now we do that every day. We forget I carry the authority of Christ. Now think about if you remembered every day, if you remembered all the time that the authority of Christ is within you. Think about that. All the time. Right? It would be different life. I'm in this situation, but everything is in your hand, Father. I can bear to stand here because everything is in your hand, Father. You have placed me in this place right now because everything is in your hand, Father. Do you really believe that that is the case? That is my question, right? We should, we should do some investigations of, of do we really know these things in every circumstance in life, right? I'm in this situation right now. Don't you think that Jesus could change your life just in three seconds? Of course you did, could. But because for some reason he placed you there, 
so that you will come into the fact of the knowledge I'm here because you placed me here. It's different now that we know Jesus. It's not like the old life that you walked. We walked around in our own ways and we created our own little life. No, that's not the way it is anymore. Jesus has taken you and placed you. Do you understand the difference? You don't just walk around and fly like a leaf or a feather in the wind anymore. No, no, no. Jesus has taken you and placed you. That's what it means. It's different. That's why we have to pray over our lives, pray over situations so that we may do the things that he wants us to do. But it's a placement. It's not an accident. You're not by there. Accident. You know, and it's just there. No, 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 no. He has taken you and placed you. And the Father, in all those circumstances, is in control. It's only when we are fully aware of that knowledge, carry that knowledge, that we take the next step. And it's only when we are fully aware, just like Jesus, fully aware that the Father is in control. It's only in that place when we pray that things happen. Because otherwise, we pray those carnal prayers, don't we? Oh, help me, Jesus. Oh, help me, help me, help me, help me. Jesus did not pray like that. He said, Father, thank you. Because he knew that the Father was in control, right? So it's different. Isn't that great revelation? I think that's such great revelation. Thank you, Lord. So he took off his outer robe and took a towel and wrapped it around his waist. So he only had some under loins on. Otherwise, he would be naked. How do you prefer? What do you think about taking your clothes off in front of your friends? Just even the thought of that, the cardinal's like, what? Is this? Uh, I don't feel comfortable with that. No. But Jesus had surpassed all the conformity of the carnal. He was way beyond that because he was 100% God, right? And he knew, that's why you have to read the order of the text. He knew that the Father was in control. He knew that the Father had placed all authority on him. Now, when you know that, you can bear to be naked. It doesn't matter anymore. Do you understand the difference? Because you're no longer intertwined with any carnal emotions. Jesus was at that place. He lived at that place. Imagine that. It's possible for us to come at that place where we are no longer intertwined in all the carnal. Now, have you ever been in a place where you're just so annoyed in the carnal and then you just say to the carnal, now just get over it in Jesus' name, and then it just shifts? We can do that because of Jesus. You cannot do that if you don't have the carnal, right? You try that, you know. You cannot minister to yourself and say, just get over it, just get over it. It will always hit you with the, to the, toward the insult in the carnal, right? The carnal always get insulted. <laughs> and it doesn't want to bow its knees. It doesn't want to take off its clothes. It doesn't want to stand naked and vulnerable. It wants to be strong and mighty and all those things. Am I right? It wants to look good. It wants to taste good. It wants to feel good. It wants to say all the right things and be really smart and bright. Am I right? Well, that's my carnal. But it won't work with Jesus. Jesus is opposite. It's only through the spiritual realm we carry the authority in Christ. We don't have any authority in the carnal Forget all that. Just forget all that. I like that. Took off the, his outer robe and took a towel and wrapped it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' dirty feet. Mm. Not clean, dirty. Man's feet with scales on it and all kinds of stuff. I'm just saying, what's, what's that a picture about? What's that got to do with anything? It's got to do with everything, doesn't it? If you kneel before someone and start washing their feet, and they're dirty, and smelly, you know, 
Why, they walk all day out there in the dirt. It's a picture of Jesus knowing all the hardship and all the dirt and all the sin and all the... He's like saying, it's like saying, I know everything about you. I see all the dirt. I see all the... Now let me wash it off. What is that an act of? Right? What is that an act of? Taking away the sins of the world. And he lowered himself. You cannot wash somebody's feet standing up. You have to bow your knees. Am I right? That is such a marvelous picture of Jesus Christ. And dry them with his towel. So he would lift the feet up because he had the towel around his waist, so he would lift the feet up and, and wrap the towel around them. Right? And a man washing a man's feet. That's such an odd picture in the world, isn't it? Not something that we, you know, what has that got to do with anything? Not something that we see in the world. Not something that is promoted in the world. Right? It's just the acts of Jesus and the way he did things. So opposite to the world. In order to come high, you have to come low. Right? So he washed the feet, he washed the dirt up, he washed away their sins. That was the next act he was going to do. That was a foreshadowing picture of Jesus on the cross. So he washed it up, washed it away, washed the fiend clean so that they may stand on the holy ground. God spoke to Moses and he said, take off your sandals because you're standing on holy ground. That's exactly what Jesus is doing here. He's, he's showing them right now when you do this act for someone, you're standing on holy ground. That's my inheritance to you. That's what I called you to do. That is the full measure of my love being poured out. It's very different. Clean feet. Now, when someone is washing your feet, you just sit still, don't you? You don't do anything, do you? So Jesus did everything, didn't he? He washed the disciples' feet. He was the one doing the whole thing. They just had to sit there and let him do it. Now can you sit back and let him take care of your life, knowing that you have the authority of Christ within you, so you can bear to be in the situation that he called you to be in? while he's washing your feet. Right? But when Jesus got to Simon Peter, that means before Simon Peter, he had already washed some feet with no complaints. Nobody said anything. Can you imagine those fishermen sitting there, and Jesus starting washing their feet. They'll be like, what is going on, Lord? They would be perplexed. They would not understand the act that he's doing. No, no, no. And we won't either sometimes. Most of the times we won't. But can we just tag along? Can we just hold his hand firm, in a firm grip and just walk with him? While he's washing the feet, while he's cleaning out your situation, it's a picture of that. There is such profoundness in this matter, isn't there? There is such sweetness in it. 
Now it's beautiful when a mother washes her baby's feet, but they're already clean. It's different when you take a fisherman's feet who never had any pedicure or anything. It's a picture of us and who we are, right? And just washing them and not letting them do anything but just sit back and be washed. Now that's Jesus. And while he's washing them, making them clean, so and making you stand on holy ground so that you may inherit everything he has for you. You cannot buy Jesus in any way into this. You just have to know that he placed full measure in your life. That is the requirement. But when Jesus got to Simon Peter, he objected and said, I can't let you wash my dirty feet. You're my Lord. You only say those things because you don't understand what it is that Jesus is doing. You don't understand, just like when Moses, he took off his feet because he was standing on holy ground because he was next to God. You, only you can only really grasp it and understand it but it's, I think it's such a great thing that he wrote it because that's the nature of the carnal, isn't it? Now, if Jesus walked in the room and just wanted to wash your feet, you'd be like, no, Jesus, I want to wash yours. Am I right? Yeah, I'm, I don't want you to wash my feet. I want to wash yours. You deserve all the glory. But you see, if Jesus didn't wash their feet, they could not inherit what it is that he had for them. He simply had to do it. So we have to allow him to take over. You have to allow him to take over your dirty feet. Stop trying to wash them yourself. Because you can't. You cannot wash them yourself. Only Jesus could wash them in such a way that you can inherit what he has for you. Because before the inheritance, there is the washing. That's the order. He has to wash them first. Do you understand that? Mm. It's not a matter of he could just give you the full inheritance. No, no. He had to wash them first. He had to take away your sins. So Peter objected and said, no, 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 Lord. Don't, they're dirty. I don't want you to touch them because they're dirty. You will be embarrassed. Yes. We're embarrassed to show who we really are because we're so full of faults. We're so full of mistakes. We're so full of dirt. And we know it ourselves when we're right next to Jesus Christ, don't we? We just know, Lord, I can't compare it to you. That's the whole point. That's the essence of why he's washing their feet. He's saying, I know, I know, but I still love you. I'm still going to wash your feet. Right? I can't let you wash my dirty feet. He's not just saying feet. He's saying dirty feet because that's what they were. Dirty. Black nails and all kinds of stuff on them, right? Jesus replied, you don't understand yet the meaning of what I'm doing, but soon it will be clear to you. Peter looked at Jesus and said, You'll never wash my dirty feet. Never. But Peter, if you don't allow me to wash your feet, Jesus responded, then you will not be able to share life with me. So Jesus simply has to take all your problems. If you don't allow him to take your problems, then you cannot inherit what it is that he has for you. Do you understand the difference? It's very important. This is really good. <laughs> if you hold on to the dirt on your feet, if you hold on to just any kind of problem, then you cannot inherit his kingdom because you're holding on to your own life and to your old life. 
You don't hold on to the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus, the life of Jesus Christ always required that we run out of ourselves. That we can't figure it out. That we don't understand. That's the whole point with Jesus. Because we don't. It's too big. It's too grand. And it's really weird when you pray and in Jesus' name that it works. You just know it's not you. That's the whole point. And you only seen, we've only seen just the speck of dust of the inheritance that Jesus has for us. He has such love for us, doesn't he? Just a full measure of love. And we don't understand it. We will never understand. If you understand his agape love, oh, then you don't really understand it. Because it's so grand. It's so big. Right? You have to allow me to take your dirt. You have to allow me to wash your feet. You have to allow me for you to place your foot on my thigh. That means that I will see all your dirt. Are you ready to expose yourself? Are you ready to give up on having control on everything? You think you have control, right? But are you ready to expose yourself and being vulnerable before Christ? Now, when someone is sitting at your feet, you look right at their face, don't you? You look right down at their face. You look right to the face of Christ. And he's washing your feet. And you're looking at him. That's all there is. You look straight to the face of Christ. That's what he wants. Knowing, and you're, you're the one watching him, you're washing your feet, knowing that he is the one taking away the dirt of your life, taking and uh, removing away the sins of your life, so that you may able, be able to stop doing the things that you cannot stop doing before. Right? Many stupid things we've done in our own name. I like that. Ain't that the truth? And we think that is such a great idea. And we did it in our own name. Jesus wants you to know that there is nothing that you can do while he's washing your feet. And he wants you to know he's there for you, looking at you. And he wants you to know that he sees all the dirt on your feet. How do you think that Jesus washed their feet? Do you think it was carelessly? Do you think it was quick? No, right? He looked down and he saw all the dirt running off their feet, right? Paying attention to getting everything off. How would you wash the feet of Jesus Christ if they were dirty? You would wash until they were clean, right? That's the nature of Christ. He will not leave something on their feet. Because then he, won't, then he wouldn't have taken all the sin. It's a picture of that, right? And while he's doing all that, he's making sure that you know that it's him doing all the work. That's the nature of Christ. He wants you to sit down. You can, you don't, they were not standing up having their feet washed. They were sitting down. So you sit down with Christ. We cannot really comprehend how big it is, what I actually, what I'm, what I'm talking about. It's so big. And he placed all the authority that he had on you. That when you put your feet down after you washed them, you became clean, and by that, holy ground was birthed, right? Because of the act of Christ, there was holy ground. Because 
Just like when God spoke to Moses, take off your sandals, Moses, because you're standing on holy ground. It's the same here. And by that, the whole the dirt became holy. Dirt is just dirt. But it became holy because of God. It became holy because of the act of Christ. So when you put your feet down, holy, holy, you're surrounded by his holiness, standing on the holy ground that he created for you to stand on. That's the whole picture of it. Do you understand that? That is so beautiful. You're created to walk on holy ground. You're created to walk with clean feet and carry out the authority of Christ. There is something about being washed in the blood of Christ and having your feet washed with Christ's hands. So when Jesus moves his hand, something happens. Right? So Jesus moves his hand upon your life, washing all the dirt off. But it requires that he moves his hands. And he does. Making sure that your feet become clean. Making sure that, you will, that when you stand up, that you will stand on holy ground. Because you have been washed clean by Jesus Christ. He's taking all, he's taking all your sins away. Now that is the holiness in the full inheritance. And only when we really know that Jesus has taken away all my sins... All the full measure of the inheritance of Christ is available. It's there now, but it's only available in the measure where you can execute it. That's the difference. But it's there. So we have to be fully aware of what it is that he's given us. Do you understand the difference? So Peter said, Lord, in that case, don't just wash my feet. My hands and my head too. Then he got it. Because Jesus what? Spoke. Mm -hmm. Revelation came to his mind. What was the revelation? Then you won't be able to share life with me. Now at this point, Peter had seen what it meant to share life with him. Because he was from God. God had revealed in him that he was the son of God. Now, in that revelation, he saw the life in Christ that was available. So here he get it. He's saying, Lord, I want all life with you. You can wash everything. You can see every part of me, Jesus. When we really understand what it is that he has and how much love he loves you with. You can't really say that, but that's actually a really good sentence to express it. When we re- that's Peter. He's saying, Lord, just wash it. Just, I'm going to show you everything. You can wash every part of me. Because I want to share in the life that you have for me. Right? I want to come closer to you. I don't know how. So just, I'm, just, I'm just giving it all to you. At this point, Peter had seen miracles upon miracles upon miracles of Jesus Christ. Mm. He'd ex- experienced things and had revelations that we read in the Word, and many more. Many more. Because the way Peter writes, you know that he had many revelations that he never spoke about. How did Peter know that Jesus went to the underworld and preached to the souls? Through a revelation. He got it through a revelation. He saw it in the spirit. Therefore, he's saying, Lord, you can, you can wash every part of me. I'm ready to show all kinds of, I'm ready to show all my dirt to you, all my sins, right? So are we ready to, to say that to Jesus? Not holding back. Can you hear? It's not holding back. It's just saying, Lord, you can wash everything. I'm, it's like saying, Lord, I'm yours. I'm here, Right? Jesus said to him, you are already clean. 
He got it. You've been washed completely and you just need your feet to be cleansed. This is so beautiful. But that can be said of all of you. <laughs> For Jesus knew which one was about to betray him. And that's why he told them that not all of them were clean. I think it's so beautiful that that's actually intertwined in the story. That means that Jesus knows everything. He knows where all people are and why they're there. That's why you can relax. You can relax with your brother. You can just relax. That's what he called us to relax. Say, hey, Lord, take over. Right? That's also what we want, isn't it? It's hard to do in your own. It's hard work in your own, isn't it? It's straining, you get full of stress, you get depressed, you get sad, you get all kinds of things in your own. But with Jesus, we can say, I don't understand, Lord, but it's yours. And if you want me to do something, you will speak it to me. It's quite simple in that sense. After washing their feet, he put his robe on and returned to his place at the table. So he made himself vulnerable when he washed their feet. <clears throat> it's a picture for us. When we do something for someone else, for Christ, we're vulnerable. We have to show a part of ourselves something that the carnal is not comfortable with. That's the nature of Christ. Then he put his rope bag on and sat down at the table. Do you understand what I just did, he said. You've called me your teacher and Lord, <clears throat> and you're right, for that's who I am. <clears throat> you see, Jesus is not afraid to speak the truth. Isn't that the most beautiful thing about Jesus? Even when he speaks to you and is rebuking you, saying, why are you doing that? Stop doing that. Isn't it wonderful that he speaks the truth? By that, we can count on him. Right? <clears throat> so if I am your teacher and Lord and have just washed your dirty feet, <clears throat> then you should follow the example that I've set for you and wash one another's feet <clears throat> by humbling ourselves, by making ourselves available in situations where the carnal don't want to be, by giving up own rights, that's my own prayer. I want to give, that's my, that's my personal prayer. I'm giving it to you. Lord, help me not to hold on to any of my rights. That's my personal prayer these days. And I, I get exposed to it all the time in my car. It's things that are being said, <clears throat> and my car is like, oh, I guess I'm a little offended. <laughs> that's the car. And then I'm like, no, I just want to give up holding on to that. Being in the being offended. I don't want I don't want to live in being offended. I don't want to live in that place. My life here on earth is too short. I'm through with that. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Because I want to be close to Jesus. Right? <clears throat> so washing each other's feet, what does that mean? <clears throat> Lower yourself, humble yourself, being a servant, being lower than the other. Are you ready always to <clears throat> become lower than the ones next to you? That's what Jesus did. When we do that, we can come high in Christ. That's the order of Christ. <clears throat> now do... 
<clears throat> for each other what I've just done for you. I speak to you timeless truth. A servant is not superior to his master. And an apostle is never greater than the one who sent him. So now put into practice what I have done for you. And you will experience a life of happiness enriched with untold blessings. <clears throat> so when we do this act for Christ, I don't know what it is with my voice. I'm going to keep preaching. <clears throat> When we do this act for Christ toward each other, this is where happiness abides. Why? Because it says, the Bible says, it's a greater blessing to give than it is to receive. Now, wrapped in all this passage, in this story, here is the riches of the joiners in Christ. When Jesus died on the cross for you, he was full of joy. He was ecstatic with joy because he knew he was going to come into fellowship with you. That you were going to be his sister. That's how he felt. So therefore, when he hung in pain, and he was, he was thinking about these things, and he knew these things were going to happen, that you were going to be in right next to him. Family. Millions of brothers and sisters all over the world. That is what is in his mind. Yes, we see Jesus on the suffering, but in his heart, in his spirit, that's what he felt. And in that, there is a surpassing peace and a joy that is so ecstatic that we have no words. It's not a not happiness. That's the world of the that's a that's a worldly word. No joy. Joy is is a exceedingly content to a measure that cannot ex be expressed. That's how he felt, because he knew now heaven was going to be popular. He was going to have family. And then he was going to go home to the Father and sit right next to the Father and start right, right there to prepare a place for you. Mm. Amen. Amen. Start working in the mansion. Mm. Jesus is always working. Now that is the inheritance. Do you understand that? Mm. So that's what we're called to do for the, each other. Right? Mm. To work the work of Christ for each other. Being overseers, being like a, a hand over the chicken for each other. Watching over each other, carrying each other's back, protecting each other. Yes, protection sometimes means rebuking. But that's, right? But that's love, just like what we do with our children. We say, no, 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 you can't do that. Why do we say that? Because we love them. Right? So that's the, there is so much in that story that you can draw that totally display the nature of Christ and what it is that he, he called us to live in, called us to abide in. That is being birthed in this thing that he did and all the things that Jesus did revolves around this full measure of him now imagine if you thought like this all the time in your life if you had these glasses on all the time in your life during all the circumstances that you go through when you stand in front of your family that you would see the situation through these Binoculars, that you would see them through these glasses of Christ. Can you imagine how different acting you would do? How would you talk differently? How would you act differently? What would you do differently toward yourself too? 
you would straighten up your bag a little bit, wouldn't you? You would say, Jesus is my king. And he's with me all the time. And I'm never alone. I may walk through that valley. It's really dark. And it might look like that I'm going to die. Valley of the shadow of the dead. But when we have Jesus, no, 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 it's not so. We speak in the name of Jesus Christ, get out of my way, right? And we pray like that for each other. That God may come and intervene in the situation, whatever situation, right? So that is the full measure that Jesus is talking about. But we have to come low. We have to come low. We cannot stand on high in our own. We have to come low and start washing those feet. Now whose feet has Jesus appointed you to wash? I think you understand the picture. Whose feet? Washed them, they're so dirty and they're so. I did not ask you how you felt. I'm just asking you if you would do it. That's the nature of Christ, isn't it? Jesus was not asked by the Father how he felt, he was asked to drink the cup, and it was bitter. And after he drank the cup, he was resurrected into a glorious life. Mm. But first, there is the washing of feet. Right? Mm. And then, there is the full display of Christ after washing the feet. Mm. And if you can, do it physically. It really lowers the carnal. People don't understand it. They're like, why, well, you want to wash my feet? Mm -hmm. Could I please? They would understand. That's the nature of Christ, isn't it? It's such a weird act for the carnal to think about, isn't it? Have you ever washed somebody's feet? Apart from your baby or something beautiful like that. Some people's old feet or, you know, just somebody's feet that were dirty, even smelly, even something that you don't want. <laughs> no. Think about that. We should do it in church someday. So now put into practice what I have done for you, and you will experience a life of happiness enriched with untold blessing. Untold, that means it's so much, it's so full that we cannot grasp it. I had one point here. Oh, yeah. Isn't it interesting that that when we, when Jesus has washed the disciples' feet, and we, we always hear, we always talk a lot about there is peace at the feet of Christ. So thinking about the analogy of Jesus washing the feet, Jesus cleans feet. He washed them all clean. Therefore, there is peace at his feet. If it, Jesus hadn't washed it clean, there would be no peace. I think it's so worth contemplating all the analogies of feet and the analogy of we hear there is peace at the feet of Jesus Christ, right? Yes, because he washed it all clean. When all sins are taken away and when you really know everything that I've said today, the authority, the full measure and everything in that, when you really know that, that he is with you full on 100% all the time, guess what? Peace. Peace will come to you in a measure that you cannot comprehend right now. It would just, 
and your life would just change radically if you really got the whole measure of what I've just said. I mean, just radically, you would just be, the world could come tumbling down, but you know that your family situation is all good. Why? Because you're the ambassador of Christ in your family right now. You're the one that can pray over your family right now. With the spirit of Christ, with the power of Christ that rose Jesus from the dead. That's the power abiding within you. Do you really know that? That when you pray over your family? So that's why it's important that we understand it fully. That's why it's important that we are so hungry for Jesus that we can come to comprehend this full on. Because in that place then, peace. That's why Paul and Silas, they could just sing in prison. Why? Because they knew, if, if it's my time now, Lord, to come home, peace. If it's not my time, Lord, to come home, I'm going to sing and worship you. They had nothing else they could do in prison. Isn't that interesting a picture? When you're in prison, that means when, when you're in a situation that is locked, what is it that you need to do? Thank him. Praise him. Worship him. That is what he's called us to do. And you can do that when you know what I've just said. Because the peace is running over you like oil. Just smearing you in. And you just see. And you just know that he is in charge. Just like I read. Jesus knew that full on the Father had full control. Do you know that the Father has full control? Those things. Right? That's why we study. That's why we spend more time with him. That's why we spend more time with him. That's why we spend more time with him. And more and more and more and more and more. Now Jesus was fully aware that the Father had placed all things under his control, for he had come from God and was about to go back to be with him. And man, think about that. If we knew that all day, the whole time, and that, that everything I do here is in full control, and if you're not calling me to be here, Lord, then you would take me home, and that would be fine too. Could we be in a place where everything is fine? Mm -hmm. Where we don't want to change it. The only one who really wants to change things is the carnal. Could we change that? Could we change this? Could we change that? What? For what reason? Now, if you investigate that, it's because when you change something in the carnal, then it's occupied by the next thing it wants to change. Now, that's the opposite of peace. Peace is contentment in the now. And understanding full on that you placed me right here. And that you are in control. And all the inheritance that you have, Jesus, you have placed within me because of your spirit. Help me to understand, Lord, the authority that you have given me. I'm going to talk more about that, I think. I felt that in my spirit. Because if we don't know the authority of Christ, what good is it is to be a Christian? What good is it if we don't get a renewed mind understanding these things? Now, can you see, if we, if we constant, now, if you constantly thought like this during the whole week, can you imagine what a life you would have in Christ if you knew these things? If you constantly would return to these thoughts over and over, every time an issue arose in your life, you would say, no, I choose peace. I choose the peace of Christ. I choose to know that you're in control. I don't understand the situation, but that's fine too. Because you understand the situation. Now that's acting like a child, isn't it? That's exactly what Jesus wants us to do. 
So at his feet there is peace. Washed clean. Last thing, when we abide, when we know all these things, when we abide in the inheritance in Christ, we can serve with love. You can only serve with love, the love of Christ, abiding in his inheritance. What is his inheritance? Love. Being a servant. And it, remember, everything else that you need in your life is in Matthew. Jesus talks about, why do you worry about your life? Look at the sparrow. It has everything. Look at the, and it's more beautiful and radiant than all the glory in, 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 on Solomon, all the magnificence that Solomon had in his life. The flower is more radiant. God knows when, the Bible says, God knows, Jesus said, that when just one sparrow falls to the ground, God knows. God knows your need. Could we live more full on in that? Really believing in all these things. It requires that we take a step out of the carnal in the spiritual realm saying, I believe in this, Lord. I don't feel it. I don't understand it. I can't perhaps not feel it physically either. But I believe it because it's in your word. And I, in my spirit, I know. <laughs> Could we walk on that? That's actually what he requires. Because those who don't see, those who don't feel, those who don't taste, blessed are those. So by that, we are all blessed. Thank you, God. Because at some point I understood that scripture and that's how I heard it preached. That when people see things, they're not so blessed than those who don't see anything of Christ. I was like, that's unfair. Because I'm still, you know, I see many things of Christ, but I'm still full of faults. Right? So I felt a little bit like, left out of that scripture. But it actually means, even though I see some things, there are many things I don't, there are many things I don't see. There are many things I don't know. I'm still blessed. I'm blessed because of Christ, right? Because in my own, I'm poor. We're all poor in Christ. Right? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Father, let us come to your feet. And Lord, I pray that you will pour out, just pour out, pour out, pour out, Lord, revelation in this, so that we will get it, Lord, that we will remember it all the time, Lord, knowing this all the time, Lord. The inheritance that you have for us, Everything, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you for full measure, Lord. Thank you for washing our feet, Jesus. Thank you for making us clean, Lord. Thank you that by you washing us clean that we can stand and walk on holy ground no matter where we are, Lord. It's not a certain place as it was with Moses. It's you that are holy ground, Lord. Help us really to comprehend it, Lord. I pray for this day, Lord. It will make a mark within us, something that would change us forever, Lord, in this place that we would know, Lord, that you are the holy ground. 
you are the holy ground lord and that you walk with us that you abide with us you sleep with us you talk with us you are at peace with us lord that we would know these things lord that something today lord would change us forever would you please stand let us have communion Thank you, Lord, that we can partake of everything, of everything, Lord. Thank you for maturing us up, Lord, making us spiritual mature to become worthy of all the things that you've done for us, Lord. I wanted to read this. Let me just find it. Oh, I did put it in here, I think. I don't remember. Let me read this. On the first day of Passover, the day when all bread made with yeast was removed from every Jewish home, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where should we prepare the Passover meal for you? He answered them, my heart longs with great desire to eat this Passover meal with you. That's how he feels every time we take communion. Go into Jerusalem and you will encounter a man. Tell him that the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm coming to your home to eat the Passover meal with my disciples. The disciples stayed at Jesus had instructed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When evening came, he took his place at the table and dined with the twelve. While they were eating, Jesus spoke up and said, One of you is about to betray me. Feeling deeply hurt by these words, one after another asked him, You don't mean me, do you? He answered them, it is one who has shared meals with me as an intimate friend. All that was prophesied of me will take place, but how terrible it will be for the one who betrays the Son of Man. It would be far better for him if he had never been born. Then finally Judah, Judas the traitor spoke up and asked him, Teacher, perhaps it is I. Jesus answered, you said it. As they ate, Jesus took the bread and blessed it, and broke it and gave it to the disciples. So he's given us his body, which is the bread that we're holding right now. He's given us the opportunity to commune with him. He said to them, this is my body, eat it. You may eat. Then taking the cup of wine, he gave thanks to the Father. He had entered into a covenant with them, saying, entered into covenant with them, saying, This is my blood. Each of you must drink it in fulfillment of the covenant. So that's what we're going to do. And we remember that every time we drink it. It's fulfilling the covenant. You may drink it. For this is the blood that seals the new covenant. That's what just what we did. It will be poured out for many for the complete forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We are so privileged to walk and to be with you, Lord. We are so blessed. Holy Spirit, I ask that you will speak to each of us. Mm. 
bring forth new understanding, Lord. As we stand here with our ears and heart directed toward you. Just a minute of silence for you, Lord, where we just really pay attention to you. Listening in on your heart. 